comfortable in all our calls, make sure we go out and execute them and be dominant every play. It's kind of a random question, but two years ago when they kicked that game-winning field goal, were you out there for that, that play? Yes, sir. Byron Young, did he get his hand on it from what you can remember? Uh, I, I can't remember, but you know, the eye and the sky don't lie. If you happen to turn on film, you know, they got 100 different angles. Mm -hmm. If you were to look for it deep enough, you'll probably find it, but I can't recall. He probably did, he probably didn't. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's just Alabama football, though. That's not something we have to go out and try to practice. Um, even before DeBoer got here, our whole thing was we do not speak to other players, other teammates, well, our teammates, obviously, but we don't speak to other teams. So, yeah, the rivalry is there, but you know what I'm saying? We let our pads do the talking throughout the game. So, um, Tim, you mentioned that uh, this, player, this team has to be a player led team. How have you seen other uh, uh, teammates or other uh, you know players step up and uh, lead since? Uh, you know, over the last two weeks with all the adversity y'all facing, uh, the adversity y'all going to face, now y'all going on the road uh, in Neyland Stadium. Oh, with everything, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's do stepping up and doing more, being, making sure we're here early, getting in the tub, stretching. You know what I'm saying? We may see some guys who may feel like they don't need to stretch. We just talk, bring them along, be like, hey, come stretch with me, do this real quick. But just everybody doing a little bit more than what we usually have been doing. Like I said, being a player-led team that – most of the time, people are going to look for you to, you know what I'm saying, lead by example. So, you know what I'm saying, if I'm out here moping, lagging around, they're going to feel like it's acceptable for them to do the same thing. So, just making sure, you know what I'm saying, we cautious of our actions and what we're doing. So, you know what I'm saying, it don't trickle down to them. Tim, is there a moment in the trenches where you're like, you know, each game or each rivalry game, you're like, oh, no, this, this game feels different uh, like <laughs> than, than others, whether it's against Tennessee, whether it's against Georgia, whether it's against Auburn. Like, is there a moment where you're like, holy crap, yeah, I haven't had that feeling yet. I don't. I feel like y'all, y'all expect the crazy answer, but I yeah. feel like I'm very calm when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, even my first game here playing at Alabama was against Georgia. Yeah. And for me to, after thinking about it, like for me to not have butterflies in that first snap, I was kind of upset. But I was like, hey man, that means you was prepared. Yeah. Like if you're not nervous at all, like that means you prepared. You know exactly what you're gonna go out and execute everything. So. I mean, I've had that feeling since freshman year, 2020, week four. So, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying, have those jitters, anything like that. If you're confident in your preparation, you don't have to have that. When's the last time you had butterflies before a football game? I probably uh, say Texas A&M. That was my first time being down there at a uh, college station. The home of the 12 man is real. Uh, if y'all ain't never been, stadium loud as hell. But. <laughs> Definitely a uh, uh, home of the 12th man for sure. What kind of potential do you see in James Smith? A lot. That's actually my middle name, so I call him my little brother. I be chalking with him a lot. But, um, yeah, he, he, he's going to be a great player. It's just, you know what I'm saying, like I said, everybody got to be locked in and honed in. I understand this is, you know what I'm saying, second year. I for sure didn't have everything figured out my second year. So just being able to talk to him, you know what I'm saying, give him certain things to put in his ear to help him up his game. Um, very lengthy, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he has many talents. He can run and get the ball a lot, you know what I'm saying, as far as scrambling out of the pocket. So, like I said, just making sure we can keep him in there, make him uncomfortable in every situation we can. And how does the Alabama defense, you know, uh, corral a, a running back like uh, Dylan Sampson? You know, he's going to uh, try to lean forward every time and uh, get as many yards as he can. So how do y'all, like, limit uh, that and make the young quarterback uh, beat y'all through the air? Do our job. Um, if you do your job, it shouldn't – that's like, if you look at it from a player and coach's perspective, if you do your job, you know what I'm saying, you shouldn't have any stress or worried about them having success. Now, when you get out of doing your assignment, what you're supposed to be doing, you overlooking eyes in the wrong place, then I guess you can say you have to worry about that. Coach Wallach said that the shovel passes that have hurt y'all the last couple of weeks are really a lot about eye discipline, which you just mentioned. What What is, like, on a shovel pass, for instance, where are your eyes supposed to be? As a defensive lineman, nine times out of ten, they're my, – my, I'm going to tell you what my eyes are. Yeah. My, <laughs> my eyes be on the guard, you know what yeah. I'm saying, the next dangerous man who could come hurt me. So, if I see one puller, he coming to me, I'm making sure I'm getting my eyes down the line where they're supposed to be and then locate the ball. Right. So, I'm, I'm assuming that's how he would like for the rest of the defense to play it. Make sure you get your eyes on the man that's coming to block you and then locate the ball. But that's, that's how I protect myself and play violent. 
I can't go up there. That's like him standing by him trying to fight me, and he right in front of me. He can knock me out before he can. Right. So I got to get my eyes on what I'm seeing. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, thank you, sir. <laughs> A little bit catchy. It's annoying. I ain't gonna lie. They've been playing this since six o'clock this morning. I ain't, uh, to be honest with you, but it, it definitely is catchy. I ain't. I don't listen to country music anyway, so that's <laughs> that's probably the only song from Tennessee I know. Where's you? it been playing? Everywhere. Um, weight room, training room. They try to play it in the locker room, but we turned that off. It, mm -hmm. We cool on that. But <laughs> everywhere. You've Even at practice. You've experienced Neyland Stadium. How good of a job have you guys done of simulating that this week? Uh, the week just started, so we really haven't, you know what I'm saying, had anything. We have had crowd noise outside, but like I said, the week just started. We haven't done anything too crazy yet. Were you kind of coaching those younger guys that are going to be playing a lot for the first time at maybe what they expect? Uh, expect the trash talking to time. Like I said, it's going to be a real disrespectful game, but like I said, expect it and learn how to respond to it. I mean, that ain't got nothing to do with you. In my opinion, I told them, if, if somebody got to sit there and tell you you trash, they the trash, man. <laughs> like, like, if I, like, you clearly not working hard enough for me to, you know what I'm saying, be going back and forth with you, but you telling me, oh, you trash, you trash, you trash. You're not working hard enough, buddy. <laughs> if you was working hard, you wouldn't have the breath nor energy or mindset to be talking about some, oh, you trash. You trying to make, get in my head to make me mess up or crash out, so I don't, that's how I take it. Like, if you telling me I'm trash, I've been, I've been whooping your ass the whole game. Simple as that. Is did, does that happen just in any big game, or is that like that happens every like, game? Okay, you know what I'm saying. Was like, that like last time or you played them, or every game? Okay, <laughs> it don't matter. Like I'm talking about old linemen in general. Like if you, anybody, if that's your sport, you feel like you have to sit there and talk trash to get them out of their mind. Hey man, that's you. Last yeah. two for Tim. Okay. Weather start to cool off. You like the hot weather or you like the cold weather? I love the cold weather. I don't like sweating for unnecessary reasons. <laughs> like I'm a big guy. I'm about 305, 3, 310, So. I don't like just sweating for the heck of it, you know what I'm saying? I just like to chill out. I love the cool breeze, be able to wear sweatpants without sweating. Yeah. So, so you feel me? It feel good. I love the wind. I love the breeze. If we pulled the whole locker room, though, most players like the hot or most like the cold, you think? Oh, it's, it's a mixture of both. Everybody from up north, there's some people from down here, so it don't even really yeah. matter. Mentality. That's good. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Y'all take it easy.